Hi, welcome back. So we've seen a lot about textures, lighting and modelling and now it's time to look at the right settings for rendering your scenes. What we have here is a design layer rendered with custom renderworks. You could of course use one of the render styles that renderworks is pre-equipped with but then you'd never know which settings were the right ones. So let's have a look at the custom renderworks settings. The first dialog that pops up allows you to enable your render options and set the quality levels for some of these options. That's only one half of the settings though because what you also need to tune is the lighting options. These are the two dialogues we're going to look at in detail today. By the way, when you're in a design layer you can get to the lighting options by clicking on the view menu and then set lighting options. Note that this will set the lighting options for all design layers and for all rendering methods. Since we'll probably want to explore a few settings and create several perspectives, rendering in a viewport on a sheet layer is the preferred method. By using viewports for rendering, you can set both your quality levels and your lighting options for each individual viewport. Then all you need to do is update your viewport and your layout is up to date. I've sped up the process a bit and render times will vary with each setting. We'll look at times in a bit. If you want to compare render settings, you can simply make a copy of your viewport and edit the settings. I'm going to add blurriness to get rid of the wetness in the pavers. Once the viewport is updated, the wetness has disappeared. Compare to the left viewport where mirroring is much more pronounced in the pavers than in the copy on the right. Blurriness is an important ingredient in realistic rendering, so we're going to take a closer look. Blurriness will only be calculated for textures that have it enabled in either the transparency or reflectivity channel. I'm going to set blurriness for my glass to 50% and have the viewport re-rendered. So in this case blurriness has created as a frosted or etched glass effect. Notice how reflectivity has not been changed and objects still get mirrored in the glass. You can play with transparency and reflectivity to create different effects. Another great technique in comparing values without the overhead of uh, re-rendering entire viewports is to use a crop portion of the viewport. If you make a copy of the viewport in place, you can use the clip tool to create a new crop viewport on top of the original one and use this copy to compare settings. I'm going to change the blurriness quality to very high, create a copy to keep the previous result and re-render. Immediately the changed settings effect is visible. Blurriness is also important in rendering metals, where it influences the brushed appearance and in interior scenes where different levels of blurriness need to be applied to materials for that very realistic look. The next custom renderworks parameter I want to have a look at is anti-aliasing. It's needed to make objects and text appear smooth on screen. Compare the polygon icon on top with and without anti-aliasing. So let's go back to the exterior view to look at the edge of the window. It appears grainy because we have anti-aliasing set to low. Now let's compare my pre-rendered viewports with settings set to low, as in this example. Medium, a little bit but not much better. High, with a marked improvement in smoothness. And very high, with perhaps a slight increase in smoothness over high but not that much. As you've probably guessed, these settings affect render times, so going from high to very high bumps up render times extremely without achieving another improvement in smoothness. This is different for different scenes, of course, and uh, an extreme example in this case. Now it's time to look at some lighting parameters. In the Lighting Options dialog, you have different settings for the number of bounces that are calculated for each ray of light. Higher numbers will improve the quality and definition of indirect light, especially in darker areas of the scene. Additionally, the quality of indirect light can be set in the custom renderworks options. The higher the quality, the more sampling points are used to calculate the light effect in a given area. Here's a scene showing different combinations of indirect light and number of bounces. The lowest quality setting is in the top right with medium quality and four bounces. It's still a good rendering, but you can see some smudging along the wall where it meets the bench top. Compared to the highest setting, there's no smudging present. In any case, the general look, colours and mood are identical in both scenes, so even when you don't have much time to have results calculated at the highest levels, you will get presentable results. 
If you want the best possible result at the minimum render times, a combination of eight bounces with medium quality uh, indirect lighting is recommended. It takes only about half the time of the very high quality settings and still produces an almost flawless result. This will vary with different scenes, of course. So that's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching again and see you next time.